Okay, now back to the photoelectric effect. Um, if um, so, if if the energy chunk h nu is smaller than the than the stopping than the, the um, work function, then you don't observe a, a photoelectric effect. If the frequency or the uh, times h, so if the energy chunk is greater than the stopping potential, okay, then um, the difference between the energy chunk h nu and the stopping and the um, work function is basically equal to the kinetic energy of the electron that uh, that is kicked out. So any extra energy above the uh, work function goes into kinetic energy for the electron, which means that it's going to be moving faster. And it has again, if it has more kinetic energy, that means it's going to that means it's going to be harder to stop uh, by applying a stopping potential, again a negative stopping potential, which tends to repel the electrons from from um, the right hand electrode, okay, in our picture. So in particular the stopping potential then is um, is then going to be given by uh, the electron charge times the potential is equal to this difference between uh, basically equal to the kinetic energy of the of the electron. And we can rewrite this as uh, as shown here. So uh, uh, basically if you solve this equation for stopping the magnitude of the stopping uh, voltage, okay, um, and then you rearrange terms, what you find is that the the stopping voltage is equal to the difference in frequency be between the light that you shine and the threshold frequency, okay, and times h over e. Again, these are two fundamental constants. So this is just a constant, and um, and so uh, this can be tested experimentally, uh, and and uh, by basically varying the um, uh, the wavelength or the frequency for a particular metal, and also looking this as a function of metal. Okay, so as a function of phi. Okay, now the University of Colorado at Boulder has uh, developed some very nice simulations, and they have one for the photoelectric effect. It's a Java simulation that I'll post on the on the uh, course website, which uh, sort of ex uh, goes over this whole photoelectric effect. So here, what we have is is this the setup that I described that Thompson used, where you have an electrode that you shine light on and another electrode, and you can apply a voltage between these two uh, using uh, using a battery. Okay, here I've set the voltage to be zero, so the battery basically does nothing, and we have a current meter. And for a sodium um, electrode over here, okay, in the in the, the target electrode, then I can um, I can vary the intensity and the um, wavelength or the, of the light to see when I start to get photoelectrons. So for example here I've turned the intensity all the way up but I'm in well into the red per, uh, orange red area of the visible spectrum and um, I don't get any photoelectrons but if I start to reduce um, the wavelength that's increase the energy of these, these uh, the uh, energy chunks. I increase the value of the energy chunks and I see that now I can start to kick out photoelectrons, okay, with a particular, um, uh, you know, kinetic energy. Well, not a particular kinetic energy, but um, some maximum kinetic energy. If I decrease the wavelength even further, corresponding to larger energy chunks, now you can see that some of the electrons are going faster. And if I want to then try to measure when uh, the stopping potential, then I can essentially uh, apply a negative voltage uh, to my electrodes, which uh, puts some negative charges on this electrode, positive charges on this, so that basically uh, they try to repel, and I can find the value of the I can find the value of the um, stopping potential such that n none of the electrons, so the electrons just the maximum uh, kinetic energy electrons are just repelled from the from the um, uh, the second electrode. So this is a really nice simulation that you can play with. I'll put it up on the website so that and asks maybe some questions on homework that will force you to play with this and have some fun.